Hello and welcome to this segment of Credit Matters TV. I'm John Paikuch from the communications team and I'm joined by Rodrigo Quintanilla, a managing director in the Financial Institutions Group. And we're here to talk about the banking outlook for 2014. Thank you for joining us, Rodrigo. Thank you, John. So, first of all, before we go forward, l looking back, what kind of year was 2013 for banks, and how has that affected our outlook for 2014? Well, uh, 2013 may have felt um, as not a very good year, but it actually was as good as it gets. Um, the, the industry has been chugging along in terms of loan growth, uh, in um, the beginning part of the year, we had a lot of mortgage refinancings and um, in relatively good capital markets. Um, uh, margins were compressing, um, sometimes substantially, uh, in the industry. But uh, by and large, uh, the major earnings driver was credit leverage. And by credit leverage, I mean uh, loan loss reserve releases or provisions being much lower than uh, charge-offs. Um, so we're ending the year in a, in a slightly more challenging note with mortgage refinancing is really dropping off and uh, more muted capital markets revenues. So these are likely to carry over into 2014, these two trends. Okay, and then what is our outlook for 2014 for U.S. banks, and what are the main themes that we'll be looking at? Well, in terms of main themes, um, I you know I would I would say that there are three that refer to the industry's fundamentals, and one on the regulatory front. Uh, on the on the financial fundamentals uh, side, uh, there's going to be a lot of wet Fed watching uh, for tapering, uh, whether it's December, January, or February. Uh, plus the government uh, shutdown uh, potential, uh, et cetera. There's, there's going to be a lot of um, interest in looking at what the Fed does and um, what happens with its uh, asset purchase program. If um, tapering begins, the big question will, be, be, will become whether the market interprets that as a monetary tightening uh, policy or not. Uh, we saw a little bit of this earlier this uh, in the summer, mm -hmm. where interest rates backed up, and you had a drop off in mortgage refinancings, and you had also a drop in uh, a very substantial drop in the um, unrealized uh, gains um, held in the available for, for sale securities portfolios uh, in the banking industry. So there's there's that's that's one theme, and because of this. Um, the, the second theme is revenue pressures will persist in 2014. Uh, we see less margin compression uh, in 2014 than we saw uh, in, uh, in 2013, but we will still see some. Uh, the greater issue is whether there's going to be earning asset growth to support net interest income growth, and we see little, um, little potential for this very muted loan growth still, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, and capital markets and refinancing still um, on, you know, very, very muted. Uh, the third uh, item would be credit quality. We're looking at uh, credit quality pretty much the cycle um, peaking, meaning that the quality of the, of the loan portfolio is going to be uh, as good as it gets, and uh, the reserve releases are likely to end. So the industry will need to move from credit leverage, driving earnings, to positive operating leverage, revenue growth minus expense growth. And then the last item in terms of uh, the regulatory front, we're moving much more into a period of implementation of rules rather than design of rules, which has been the case for the past two or three years. Okay. And, and what do we expect to see, and how does that reflect or not reflect the past few years for banks, and, and how might that affect our, our view going forward? Well, as I mentioned, credit leverage is nearly exhausted. Um, the need for operating leverage is going to be much more important, uh, especially ma bank management teams should be more uh, interested 
and focused on expense um, uh, controls. And, um, and I think that those are the basic uh, items that carry over. Mm -hmm. And what are the main headwinds and tailwinds we expect to see for, for U.S. banks uh, in, in 2014? And what could that mean for things like earnings and also how that would translate into, into ratings? Right. Um, well, we're looking, we're looking just, just uh, to be clear, we're looking at core earnings to operating revenues, looking at the margin, operating margin in that manner between 23 and 25 percent. And this is pretty flat with respect to this year and uh, in the year before. Uh, so not much change, but the drivers should be somewhat uh, different. In terms of headwinds, uh, there are two big buckets. One is interest rate risk, and the other one is credit risk. Interest rate risk, as I said, um, the Fed and you know what monetary policy does, I think will be key, especially for those banks that are very spread dependent, like the regional banks. Uh, but then you have the unexpected risk that uh, a sudden rise in interest rates may uh, have also on securities portfolios or on other assets given that the, some of the banks have um, been uh, taking on more interest rate risk in, in a very low risk environment. Um, lastly, there could be collateral damage within the banking industry uh, as interest rates back up, not because of direct exposures, but with other type of asset classes that, uh, like the mortgage REITs or others, that m may have an impact on some of the players within the banking industry. Um, within credit risk, we have seen that the Fed surveys have been pointing to looser uh, or loosening underwriting standards across the board for either uh, CNI lending, mortgage lending, uh, consumer lending, et cetera. So we we think that um, this sort of looser underwriting um, period will be followed eventually by higher losses. Uh, that's, that's the way that this works. So we're looking at the credit cycle really turning towards the end of 2014 or the early, early part of 2015. And by that I mean that loan loss provisions will start uh, to creep up again uh, versus charge offs. Okay, so quite a few things to be looking at in the, in the 12 quite, months to quite come. Quite a few things, yes. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much, Rodrigo. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. On behalf of Standard & Poor's, I'm John Pycooch.